Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the forest. We're here in the classroom again with my fabulous video assistant producing team. Hi, video Hello. assistant producing team. Um, and today our lesson is on energy in phase changes. Um, so we are going to do a couple of phase changes. I've got a test tube filled with water and I've got a temperature sensor in there and this is hooked up to our fabulous lab quest. And you can see on the screen over here, we are monitoring the temperature. That will always be showing right there in the corner. And then I'm going to make a live graph um, as we take that water and run it through a couple of phase changes. Um, in order to do the phase changes, of course, I'm going to need to change the temperature of the water. Uh, we are going to look at what happens when the water cools down and freezes and then warms back up and melts again. So um, in order to do that, quickly, I need to make a nice little cold bath. And so for my nice little cold bath, um, I've got the cold stuff right here. So there you go, you're familiar with that. We've used that before. Not making any bombs today, but there is some dry ice. And here is my alcohol mixture to make a nice, super cold, dry ice bath. Yes, ooh. All right, so what I'm going to do is get that test tube in here, and we're going to collect some data. When I put it in there, um, I will be stirring this temperature probe around while it's in there to try to maintain a more or less constant temperature in my water bath. Okay, so there you go. You should be able to see on the screen now. We've got temperature versus time data I'm taking. And as I stir, the temperature may change a little bit as I stir, not because of any mechanical energy I'm giving to the molecules. I'm not stirring that quickly, um, but simply because uh, having been sitting there for a while, the denser, cooler molecules went to the bottom while the warmer ones were at the top. Um, and now I'm mixing them all around. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the dry ice bath and this is all probably gonna happen fairly quickly, maybe even faster than I want it to, but here we go. So into the dry ice bath. And so as this stuff cools down in the dry ice bath, you'll notice that, of course, the temperature is changing. Um, and so that temperature goes down rapidly as heat flows out of the water in the test tube into the dry ice bath. The reason for that direction of heat flow, you should know. So the water in the test tube is warmer than the surrounding alcohol bath. And so heat flows from the water in the test tube to the surrounding alcohol bath as heat flows out, the temperature goes down. And that process continues for a while. Um, and you can see on the graph, you show in the graph there, you can see on the graph that the process has slowed down a little bit. Um, and it seems like it's maybe starting to level off some. Um, and I'm going to keep stirring this around as it levels off some. And at a certain point here, the temperature just kind of stops going down. Um, why do you think the temperature has stopped going down? Okay, so you can pause the video if you want to. Not you making the video, but at home, you can pause the video and think about why the temperature has stopped going down. And now I'm going to tell you. So, um, did you think the temperature stopped going down because it had reached the surrounding, the temperature of its surroundings? Well, that's not the case. We know that's not the case because this dry ice bath is much colder than zero degrees Celsius. So what could be going on in there? Um, I'll give you a clue by, well, not pulling this thing out because the dry ice bath wasn't deep enough. Um, so I haven't done this everywhere in there yet, but I'll wait just a little bit longer. So it's gonna maintain that temperature for a little while while something is going on inside the test tube. And I may actually make my dry ice bath a little bit deeper so that maybe we can get this everywhere in the test tube. I put too much water in my test tube. So, continue. oh, yeah, there we go. So now 
temperature is going down again. Yeah, so um, what happened when it plateaued there for a while? Why did it plateau there for a while? Well, here is the answer to why it plateaued for a while. Okay, so what happened in there? We knew it was gonna happen. The water froze. When was it freezing? Right in that region was when the freezing process was happening. We're gonna talk about that energy change a little more in just a second, but be thinking about this. Um, during the time that the temperature was staying the same there as it was freezing, um, was the kinetic energy of the molecules in the water changing? We know here, the kinetic energy of the molecules was going down. Here, the kinetic energy was not changing. How do we know that kinetic energy wasn't changing? Think about what we know about kinetic energy and how we measure kinetic energy. So, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules, and so if that temperature was staying the same, the average kinetic energy of the molecules wasn't changing. Um, but still, those molecules were losing energy. We know those molecules were losing energy because, once again, the surroundings were much colder than this zero degrees Celsius. We see that as it continued to cool down later on. So, energy was flowing out that whole time right here, even though the kinetic energy of the molecules wasn't changing. If their kinetic energy wasn't changing, what must have been happening to those molecules? Um, we know they're losing energy. What kind of energy are they losing? If you said potential energy, hey, that's the right answer. Um, so yeah, those molecules' potential energy was going down. The molecules' enthalpy was going down. Um, so during this phase, the potential energy of the molecules decreases while the kinetic energy remains the same. Um, and then once they've all turned to the solid phase, they've all reached that lower enthalpy state, then the molecules will no longer be able to lower their enthalpy and the kinetic energy continues to go down until they reach the temperature of the surroundings or until I pull it out of the cold bath, which I did here. And so now we're gonna warm this up and yeah, I have enough time on that. Um, I'm gonna accelerate the warming process just a little bit here by putting it into my room temperature water bath. So room temperature water, room temperature air. And yet when I put it in the water, you'll see it starts warming up a lot faster. Um, you won't see that immediately, but there we go starts warming up a lot faster. Why do you think it warms up faster in the water than in the air, even though both are at room temperature? Okay, so did you say because water is a much better conductor of heat than the air is? If you did, that's the right answer. Um, so water is a much better conductor of heat, and so it sends heat into the ice much faster than the air sends heat into the ice, increases the kinetic energy of those molecules faster, and so then that process slows down and we're gonna reach a plateau here again. Um, what do you think is going to be happening when we're at the plateau? And at what temperature do we reach the plateau? Hopefully both of those answers are something that you have figured out by now. So we should be plateauing right around zero degrees Celsius again. Why zero degrees Celsius? You know why zero degrees Celsius. So. You can see here in the test tube, um, the ice has started to melt. I can pull it out like that. Ice has started to melt. I'm gonna continue putting that in the water though to get the ice to melt faster. And maybe we can finish coming off of that plateau. I may actually do a little of the warm water bath just to continue speeding that process up so I can get this all done on one graph and on one not too, too long video. All right, so put this under here and run that in the warm water or the soon to be warm water. Maybe now you can go get a beverage. I should be done by the time you're back. And here we go. Okay, so we plateaued there right around zero degrees Celsius. Now we've got a situation where the tip of the probe has broken out and it is measuring temperature there um, outside of the ice. Some of that ice is still frozen, can't maintain a constant temperature everywhere in this thing. Um, but some of that ice is still frozen, but the tip has broken out. We have melted and now we continue to warm up. 
All right, so um, I am going to send you all a copy of this video, uh, or sorry, this graph right here. And on the graph, I will label some things for you, um, some regions here, and we'll talk about what energy changes are going on in different regions and what equations we would use to calculate the amount of energy change in different regions of the graph. But that's all I'm going to do for now in the video. Hope everybody's doing well. See you next time.